As Malaysian, we love our ikan bilis. There is no dish that cannot be perfected with this tiny, shiny silver fish. But have you ever wondered how does a tiny fish transform from this to this? And what does it take to process a huge school of tiny fish to our favorite source of umami flavors? Hi, my name is Ivan. Welcome back again to Fearless Passport. Today, I interview Yushan Ikambilis from Langkawi to get some insider information about the process of anchovies, the challenges in this industry, and how to differentiate the high-quality local anchovies versus the imported ones. In the past, when the locals only afford small fishing boats, Fishermen are limited to the riverside and shallow sea because they couldn't go beyond due to safety and licensing issues. These small saltwater fish became the main source of income because they feed on the zooplankton found abundantly in the shallow coastal water. These small fish were locally known as ikan bilis. Around 1877, a group of Chinese fishermen from Caozhou in the Guangdong region migrated southward with their boats and nets to Siam. Like most Caozhou people, the Teochunang are fishermen, and they repeat the same industry as their forefathers in the new land. Later, the majority of them moved further south to Malaya and settled in the state of Kedah. At first, they own license only for freshwater fish, but eventually niche down to local anchovies. In the Teochew dialect, ikan bilis is known as kanghu. Every morning 3 to 4 a.m., our boat captain or tai gong in Thai language would get ready to set off from the port. Based on the sonar activity, tai gong can locate the fish by observing the sound wave reflections on the radar. Once school of fish is detected, the fishermen drop the net while encircling the fish in a clockwise direction. This fishing method is known as persin. Persin is a large wall of netting around an entire school of fish. It is especially effective in capturing species that are swimming in large groups at surface or mid-ocean waters, like anchovies, squid, small sardines to large tunas. Immediately after the anchovies are pulled off from the net, these fresh tiny silverfish are instantly boiled in the salt water for 2 minutes. So here's the key to determine the saltiness of anchovies. The saltier is the hot water, the saltier is the anchovies when they are dried. And this boiled dried processing method helps to ensure the maximum freshness of each batch. In Vietnam, fishermen will add some sugar of less than 10% concentration because sugar also works as preservation in keeping the anchovy a longer shelf life. Once the boiled anchovies are brought on land, they are sent to a processing factory with oven facilities. Traditionally, before the oven is introduced, anchovies are spread on a bamboo mat or aluminum sheet or even mosquito net before drying under the natural sunlight. This method somehow contaminates the anchovies by exposing them to dust, birds and animal excretion, as well as weather damage. There is also a risk of bacteria and mold contamination due to inconsistent drying. Quality control becomes really difficult, not to mention the production of good quality sea produce. But now, the boy anchovies are delivered to a factory with an indoor hot air room for cleanliness and most importantly, consistent drying. In a confined factory, Anchovies are spread onto multi-layered stainless steel trays before moving into the preheated oven for dehydration. The next morning, dry anchovies are ready for separation. During the sea capturing process, different anchovy species are swimming together in the room. Unwanted species such as crab, prawn, jellyfish, squid and other bycatch might join the party together. So here comes the most labour-intensive procedure which is to filter the dry fish by careful hand selection. On this specially made tabletop, workers screen different species of anchovies and separate them into different containers. With years of experience and admirable sharp eyesight, workers can instantly differentiate each species. Last but not least, some machinery vibrations to filter the detached anchovies head and excessive flakes before grading the end product for distribution. This is the complete cycle of modern anchovies processing. 
Malaysia, the major anchovies producer include Kelantan, Kedah and Sabah. Today, Kedah has the largest fleet of licensed anchovy per since Langkawi Island alone makes up a big portion of the fleet. This island has 40 vessels licensed to capture anchovies and becomes the main producer of dried anchovies in Malaysia. However, there has been a steady decline in anchovy landing each year. Overfishing and deteriorating climate change have negatively impacted the production of zooplankton, which is the base of anchovy food chain. This vicious cycle in turn affects the seasonal migration patterns of anchovies. In the last two years due to the COVID-19 lockdown, the anchovy industry has also faced similar challenges as other industries. That is the manpower issue. Since the majority of the anchovies are from northern Malaysia, most workers came from the southern Thai near Malaysian Thailand border. And the challenges of this industry lie within the natural supply, which is beyond everyone's control. The humble ikambilis may be a tiny fish, but it's surprisingly chock full of nutrients. It's got iron, healthy omega 3 fatty acids, and calcium. It is also packed with a heap of protein. One serving of ikan bilis has up to 53 grams of proteins with only 6 grams of fats. The tiny size of anchovy with a shorter life cycle also indicates less mercury contamination compared to larger fish, so it makes a perfect fish option for children who are in brain development. So what are the common anchovies available in Malaysia? In Langkawi, the largest yield of anchovies is Jinxian. It is suitable for all cooking such as broth and daily stir-frying. Heiyao is similar to Jinxian. However, the body is darker in color, hence it comes at a cheaper price. In fact, Heiyao brings the same umami flavors as the Jinxian anchovies. Baipei is a relatively expensive variety among medium-sized anchovies. People who understand anchovies will favor Bai Bay because the white lines on the fish body is shallow and transparent, so the flesh is chewy and easy to swallow. Rou Jiang is similar to Bai Bay, except that the flesh is thicker and embodied higher fat content, and you will notice a layer of oil when you boil the bakang to the broth. Rou Jiang bakang is more fragrant when it comes to stir frying, as the fish will release some fish oil when heated. The downside of bakang is a storage problem. Longer storage will cause bakang to turn slightly yellowish, hence a less appealing appearance. If you are at the wet market, it is best to check the moisture of dried anchovy with your hand. The good anchovies are made relatively dry but not 100% dry because when the bodies are too dry, their heads and tail will break off easily. So usually it is better to choose anchovies with the complete fish body because that means the batch has not gone through a lot of transfer and touching. This white crystallized powder on fish bodies is totally normal. It is a condensed salt from the boiling process, so don't worry, it is completely safe and edible. Due to different processing technology, anchovies from the nearby sea such as Thailand are in darker colors and are probably quite moist and very salty when you purchase them from the market. Just in case you want to have a taste of authentic Malaysian produced anchovies, you can now purchase them online through this website, ikambilis.com.my. Here you get to order all fresh anchovies from Langkawi. As the industry is expanding with more downstream products, you can also get child friendly, protein dense, high calcium anchovy powder, convenient soup sachet, and exceedingly addicting sweet and sour anchovy snack and your purchase would greatly support the local anchovy industry and most importantly, help to sustain the local workers and Malaysian fishery business. And I'm sorry if this video is a little bit long. However, if you're still watching, I have an exciting news to share with you. In August, I'm affiliated with a local tour agency named as Palo Tour to the mysterious Central Asia Kyrgyzstan. So I will be galloping on the vast grassland exploring the exotic historical remains from Silk Road and sleeping in the local youth. If any of these fantastic photos caught your attention, please click on this Facebook page. I'll put the link in the description box for inquiry. So who knows, you may secure a seat and travel with me in the coming August. 
and even if the date doesn't suit you, there are more Kyrgyzstan guided tours will be open in the future. You may use my code for a hundred ringgit off. So I hope to see you in my upcoming trip to Central Asia. Once again, do leave me a comment, subscribe and share this video with your family to understand more about the anchovy industry. See you in the next video. Bye.